Welcome to this video. In this section, we will talk about how to interface signal light from IFM with PLC S7-1200. So you can see in this video, I have the signal lamp. And the best thing about this lamp is it has various segments which can have different colors. And it also has a buzzer inside. So we will see and understand how a PLC can control the lights in these segments and also control the buzzer. And we would be most prominently working with the operation modes like if we have a start mode or stop mode or manual automatic or error so based on these modes which are inside the plc we will create different color indications that's the idea of using a smart light or signal light so that a user can know from the color of the light what is the present status of your machine this is what we are going to learn in this section how to make the logic for that and how to convert that logic information to a signal light all right, so what are the things required for this application? You need a Siemens PLC, of course, and then you need IO-Link Master because this is an IO-Link device, IO-Link Actuator, and you need a signal light. So the one which I'm using is DV2510, that's the model number of this device. The software I'm using is just Siemens TI Portal. So you can use version 13, 14, or 15. Now let's understand the structure of this smart light. So the smart light has various segments. So for example, segment one, two, three, four, five. These are the segments starting from the top. Segment one, two, three, four, and five. And you can also see in the video. And there's a buzzer which is installed in the bottom. Now these segments can have different operation based on the value put inside that. For example, every segment has a byte. So this is like byte 6, byte 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And these bytes, when have the information like, if this byte 6 has value 0, this will be off. So there will be no color in that. If this uh, byte 0 has, this uh, byte 6 has 1 in that, this segment will be blue. And based on the value 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up to 7, it can have different colors. So it can have blue, green, cyan, red, purple, amber, and white. So the segment 1 is individually controlled by using its bytes. So you can put the value from 0 to 7 to have different color. Also, there is a different, oh, you can also see here. For example, QB6 for segment 1 is here. So in this byte, the first three bits define the color. So this is bit 0, bit 1, and bit 2. These defines the color. So this is binary 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, something like that. So you can create the color using RGB combination. Okay. And the last three bits, the most significant bits, uh, not the last three, but the most significant bit 6, 7, and 5, these defines the appearance. If you see here, appearance, whether you want this color to blink or flash or you just want a stable. So if it is 0, this color will be stable, continuous lighting. And if you move here 1, and if you move here blue, then it will be blue blinking. Or if this is 0 and this is blue, then it, it will be stable blue. Similarly, for other colors, you can have blinking slow, blinking medium, blinking fast, or flashing slow, medium fast, or not used. So you can define in this byte which color you want and which type of blinking you want, if you want that. So similarly, you have another byte for segment 2 for this segment, and this byte for segment 3, and this byte for segment 4, and similarly for segment 5. And then you have... Uh, the last byte for the buzzer. So this this bit define uh, to, if you want to enable the buzzer, this should be true. This bit zero, and then these three bits five, six, seven, uh, four, five, and six will define the buzzer sound. If it's rapid, intermediate, rapid, high, low, sweep sound, and different sound signals we have here. So what you are going to understand that every segment has a byte which we can control using a PLC. So this was the LED status, how we can control it. And what we are going to learn in this section, so we have various tasks I have defined, which we will be following through the videos. The task one is adding our link master in the Siemens network. This we have already done in RFID section. If you haven't seen it, you can check that. So in this uh, task, we'll be doing some, uh, we'll be doing it quickly, not in that detail as we have done before, because this is a repetitive. And then it's configuration of ports for signal light. Just like we have done for RFID, we will do the same for that. We will configure the ports required in this IO link master. We will define which port is eligible for this smart light or signal light. Then assigning the GB to write the signal light status. So we will take a DB in which we will move the value to see the different color status on the signal lamp. Then we will test the read write operation for signal light. So I think there's only write operation, there is no read, but anyways we will check uh, the different color and we'll check the buzzers by moving the value in the DB. 
Okay, and then we will write a PLC algorithm to control the signal light with respect to operation modes and error. Now, most of the time we use signal light just to indicate operation modes and error. You can also use it for various other purpose, for example, to indicate the level in a tank or to indicate some um, deviation within the signal light. But in this section, we will just learn the oper operation modes and error because if you understand how to control the operation modes and reflect in the signal light, you can also do other things. Because the basic idea is how to control the signal light via Siemens PLC using Eulink. So I have defined some various cases. For example, we have the case one, we will use the top two segments for red, which means the operation is stop. If you find this red is blinking, this we can indicate that E stop is active. So emergency stop is pressed, so this will start blinking. In case if it's green, green static, we can, in, we can say that it's for automatic operation and static blinking it means automatic selected now the difference between these two is automatic operation means the mode is automatic and it's running so it's run mode automatic if it is stop the um, the operation mode is selected but it's not running then it will be blinking that the mode is selected but it's not running and then similarly we have for manual operation manual static is just blue manual selected is blinking okay and then we have for yellow, this is for the section segment three and four. If it's just static, we can say that it's a kind of warning. And warning could be like, for example, a magazine is about to get empty. It's not empty. It's a warning. Hey, come over, fill the workpiece or fill some magazines because it's about to get empty. So it's a kind of warning. Or if the level is decreasing towards critical level, if you have a tank and the level is decreasing and you don't want operation to suffer, so it's a kind of warning. But if it is blinking, you must know that blinking is a kind of attention. So if yellow is blinking, it means tank is empty or it can be an error. The tank is totally empty. Now we cannot proceed further. So we indicate that by blinking. So it's a kind of error. So the difference between warning and error is warning is like situation is going to get worse so please come and take care of that error is it's already worse so for example tank is empty or asrs it's um, warehouse unit is full so machine cannot work further so this is blinking similarly for the last segment we can say it's a kind of user interaction we will not use when it's static that's not applicable and if it is blinking we will say that there is a user interaction required for example for example if there is some leakage in the system or some tuning is required we can use it for blinking or if parameter needs to be optimized or changed in the HMI so a user interaction is required so it will come and change the parameters so it can be anything it can be one of your own ideas how do you want a user to interact with the machine in which situation so for that we will also use segment 5 so these are the five segments which we will be using in this task and we will be doing all these tasks one by one following the next videos so this video is just about the explanation what we are going to learn and how we are going to proceed if you have any doubt or any suggestions feel free to feel free to write me back so i'll see you in the next video